Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Here with Callis Ireland in Sheffield at the Ingle Gym, world famous Ingle Gym. Uh, look, we're just going to rattle off a few things. Obviously, um, certain things on legal grounds that can't be said, and uh, you know, not not the side of. I can say that myself. I can say that myself. Big boy here. Uh, no, uh, there are. Legally, there's not much changed since last week, so there is only certain things I can talk about. Well, I can talk about Junior, and I can talk about you know plans. Um, but yeah, you go ahead. Just what you want to ask. Just quickly on, on on your side on Wednesday when it all came out, as reported from the mail, um, the sort of idea was that the fight would go ahead as planned, and it was a bit of a weird 24 20 to 28 hours, I suppose. You know, looked over at Frank Smith a couple of times, spoke to him at the end of the night. He said, "Go, that was a stressful day, Charlie." Um, I imagine it was just all sorting things out, and, and the process that happened happened. Uh, uh, here we are next week. Still gutted. Um, gutted for for Junior, gutted for every fighter, trainer, team on that undercard who'd gone through those hard camps, gutted for every fan who'd, who'd bought tickets and arranged to come to London f to the O2. Um, you know, bitter pill, and but also bitter for, 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 for the team, or my team around the, the event who'd worked month, months and months on, on putting this event together day and night huge event to organize and you know it was absolutely uh, absolutely gutting you know and, and here we are looking now what's what 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 you know basically comes out of their side of things you know where we are onlookers uh, onto their legal situation with with what's going on um, so when you said it I can't say much I can't I could say loads of things but I know as much as you know right now. I saw the same rumours in the, in the newspapers about sec other tests. Uh, we have no information as such uh, on other tests. Uh, we're certainly not party to anything of that. And, uh, you know, at the end, it's it's their side now. We said, look, we said at the press conference, we're looking to reschedule. But that, of course, depends on what comes out of the next, and I'm guessing, two, three weeks of of what they're what they're doing um, you know I see a lot of big talk from their side in terms of the applause should be loud as, as, as loud when it when he's cleared and whatever that's 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 fantastic but you know that has to happen um, and that's that's you know that's something that we have nothing to do with with the with a side now that's that's sort of waiting at, at the same time we we are not waiting in the background we're working on on on, on all different scenarios and it's you know as a promoter you always have to figure different scenarios around your fighter but I've never been in this pitch position now where it's like you really don't know you have no control on the other side you don't have no real knowledge of what's going on and uh, that's frustrating but at the same time you know like we are just looking to make positive steps forward for Junior. Just two more on Junior. Um, we saw Junior come in on the scales on Saturday, I believe, around 11. Uh, I think he became, it came in at just over 159. This has led to a lot of discourse on Twitter the, and social media. The, uh, the, that wasn't the weight of the uh, rehydration, by the way. But you, know, you saw from that, from that how hard his camp was. And that's the weight part. I can tell you from the sparring part, he did more rounds than I've ever seen him do in any camp uh, in the last five years. He looked terrific, he was so up for it, and anyone who knows Junior knows how dedicated he is to the sport. Like, you know, that's his, that's his MO, you know, and uh, last night we had, we had, um, we had a little giveaway event and I think it took his mind off things a bit but you can tell he's, he's of course he's gutted you know he was so up for this fight he was you know but that part was it was it was heartbreak pure heartbreak and now we have to we have to pick up the pieces now from our side from our team and um, and, and you know move forward positively Finally, for me, Junior, uh, I think Liam Smith's come out on Sky Sports and said, look, Junior will want to be out this year. Is this something that you're sort of discussing now behind closed doors? You will want to get him out? Yeah, I've got, well, of course we want to get him out. He's, he's in the prime of his career. So this has been a body blow in terms of career planning as well. Yeah? Um, but there's lots of different options. And, you know, the question is whether we, we, we go out quickly because he's 
he's, he's at peak form now. So really, he needs to fight now. At the same time, um, do then take rather finish the camp with no fight, go on to the next fight. Those are all decisions that really ultimately come down to, to what Junior wants to do. I can just prepare the different situations and scenarios around that. Just picking back up on the uh, misfit side of thing, um, I just sort of said, look, it's a new audience, it's not professional, but look, these guys have got their own audiences and we saw how well the KSI event did and it's something new that whether people like it or not, it's going to be dabbled into and something that, you know, does have an audience of its own. Yeah, it's, it's got a very big audience of its own. Um, don't take it for what it's not. What, take it for what it is. It's novice boxing with celebrities in their own segments. And they're all different types of segments, you know. Um, most importantly, what does it bring? It brings fun. It brings, you know, look, here we are in an institution of boxing, the Ingle Gym today. This gym's going to have eyeballs on it tonight from all different age group segments who've never heard of the Ingle Gym before because they've probably never heard of boxing before. Wow, they may be going a bit far there, but, but it's bringing new consumers to the sport of boxing. And to, to an extent, it actually does because I've, I've got stuff on my own social media and I do get comments from people on the younger age that say, look, you know, I think from a lot of the events where, you know, maybe KS, or KSI and Jake Paul, where they have professionals on their undercard, people do end up taking a liking and picking up the game in the professional ranks as well. No, that, that, listen, at the end of the day, we're better off having them in our sport than having them in another sport. You know, so you can look at it, some people like it, some people say, no, it's, it's right, it's taking away money from off. It's not taking away money from normal boxers. It's adding to the pot. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a segment that wouldn't feed, what doesn't take a thing out of normal boxing. If anything, it, well, it's not if anything, it adds to normal boxing, 100%. Just in terms of growing it, obviously 002 and, and they follow obviously out to Texas with Haseem Rahman and you know all of that sort of thing. Um, just expanding and realising those new audiences but also I think there's a special part in the crossover fight. Haseem Rahman a fighter, Victor Belfort, something that's been explored before and you know it's not just saying look for example this Saturday night a lot of TikTokers and YouTubers whereas on another event it'll be different types of personality. Very fast. So. There's a reason why it's MFX series on the zone, um, 001, 002, is because it is longevity. It's, a, it's something that we feel that we can, we can give a real brand to. I think we succeed that. The first event in the O2 was a blockbuster. Now we've gone for a, a regular fight night in Sheffield. There'll be a few thousand in there on Saturday night. And it will grow. And next month we're out in Austin, uh, in Texas, with uh, Vitor Belfort against Hazim Rahman Jr. and a fantastic star-studded card. And uh, yeah, that's you know that's the way we roll. Uh, very excited about that. And you know, in January we're back out again, also in the US. So we'll be back in March in uh, in the UK again. Just finally, on a sort of personal note for yourself, obviously big boxing family and you know, you've grown up watching boxing and obviously your father and now you and Nissa, something that you guys do. Um, are you enjoying the change? I, you know what, when I sat down after doing the, it was a very fun fight week, the first one, uh, the O2 with KSI. When I sat down in the evening, uh, waiting for the, for the fights, I wasn't sure what to expect. But I can tell you something, I didn't move from my seat, I was entertained all night and also outside of the ring, it was like crazy. You know, That's a buzz. I mean like, like you, had, you had more celebs than I've seen of any other O2 fight night, it, but it was also very quirky, so not like Logan Pauls, but not your, your average boxing celeb, it was like really young and it's fresh. It was a very cool, very cool dynamic. Really good. Really good to see. Kala Top Man, thank you for speaking to me at Boxing Side.